Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent, and welcome to Flat Earth Q&A emails number 89, where I read your questions that you email me to msargent23 at comcast.net, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. First email is called Flat Earth Bible. Appropriate on a Sunday. Mark, I've seen so many of your videos and probably your video more than others that swayed me and Rob Skiba. I was a pretty devoted Christian a long time ago, but science made me question things that the Bible said. <coughs> Excuse me. And I started to think that science made more sense in a way. Now that I know the Bible, a lot of things make more sense. Tower of Babel, the flood, how the waters fell from the sky, and that is what the Milky Way is just a reminder of what happened. I now study and read the Bible more than ever and am ashamed for doubting God. Hmm. Just curious what your standpoint is on religion and flat earth. From my standpoint, uh, I would make sense that they established this as well to hide God. Oh, I see. And that's from Brandon. Um, do I think that the religion was put out there to hide God? Not necessarily. I, I think like anything, any power structure, any group, you know, power corrupts and men tend to bend things and twist things into their own liking. Uh, it happens in politics and business and entertainment and sports and journalism and even science. So no, do I, do I think religion was necessarily formed to uh, do sinister things? No, I, I, I'm sure it probably started out innocent enough, but then bad men got involved. It always is that way, right? And, you know, men get involved and uh, they turn it into something else. So, but... You know, it's all part of the, the grand story, the grand plan. Who, who am I to say why exactly religion was introduced into civilization at all? Because remember, it wasn't just one religion. There's five of them out there. Uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. I know there's a lot of smaller ones, but uh, the big five, uh, you know, they, were, they start out in all different parts of the world. So, you know, maybe it was all part of the grand plan. Interesting question to start out the email thing. I, I did not expect that one. Uh, let's go to this one. This one's called Flight Route Query. And we are spinning. And while we're spinning, I should tell you that it's done by a woman named Claire. Uh, you know what? Uh, well, you know, even before this email comes, it, there's something I want to read real quick. And this was sent to me uh, by Nathan Oakley. It's a uh, not not an email necessarily it's just an announcement that he wanted me to make and i, I thought i'd read it uh, hi mark i'm sending this to everybody yeah science is being hijacked by globe heads and the terminology is now being hijacked by flat earth we are all guilty of it and science is where we win destroying what globe heads claim is science is where we get most of our wins on the debate what is your scientific evidence for your space religion this locks in a globe head into giving actual science. This is all for nothing when we get asked, what was the dependent variable on the recent flat earth laser test? Answer, there isn't one. This isn't scientific. This isn't an experiment. This doesn't establish a cause and effect relationship. This doesn't have a valid hypothesis. The answer we, not me, flat earthers give is the same as the globe heads answer, a vague, incorrect explanation of an observation thus making the observation pseudoscience rather than a jolly good observation with a reasonable and logical conclusion the earth is obviously and observably flat fyi john is going to be addressing this very real problem with our side of this argument and i'm 100 percent behind him we all need to take ownership of real science, call a spade a spade rather than calling it spade experiment, and call out the globe heads who use the term science when they want to claim they have proven something. The earth is obviously and observably flat, and we do not need to jazz up the observation of our reality with terms that do not apply. Observation is not scientific. Systematic experimentation to establish cause and effect based on naturally observed phenomena uh, dependent variable, that's science. I don't want this to become an internal war. I want to reclaim science, a narrow term, and stop Flat Earth from falling into the same trap of abusing this term when claiming we can prove the Earth is flat. The shape of the Earth falls outside the remit of science. We do not need science to prove the obvious. Hmm, it's good. 
I hadn't actually read that before. I was doing too many things, but that's from Nathan Oakling, and you can check out his channel if you get a chance. All right, this uh, next email is called Flat Route Query. Hi, Mark. Thanks for your videos, which I've just started watching. I've only recently discovered the Flat Earth idea, and a lot is falling into place, but I do have a query, and that is about flight routes and steering. If... In the round globe theory, we set off from London Airport heading east. We should return to London by simply traveling in a continuous straight line. In this instance, we wouldn't have to steer a curve to the left to keep us on route. In the flat earth concept, we can still leave London Airport, travel east and return to it, but we would have to continually keep steering to the left to maintain a circular form. Surely pilots would have noticed this. If we would leave London Airport and travel in a straight line, we'd always end at the South Pole. Any explanations? Best regards, Claire. And yeah, I mean, this is an old, old question, which is, first off, the, the world is so big, they would never, ever notice any, it's not like, you know, they're hard, turning hard left or hard right, depending on which rich direction you're coming from. Uh, the Plus the compass works the same way on a flat earth as it does a globe earth. So the compass reads fine and GPS is going to take them where they want. Remember pilots, they're just flying how they normally would. If you're, if you're flying without GPS, you're using the compass. And if you're using GPS, well, you're having coffee. You're not doing anything. Uh, you would never ever notice ever uh, the slight, slight, slight variance to the left or slight variance to the right. You just wouldn't. So there's my answer. This one's called Hello from Toronto. Hi, Mark. I wanted to take a few minutes and thank you for all your incredible work regarding Flat Earth. It has changed my life and I already, I was already involved for many years with the truth movement, if you will, but I had no idea it was this big. Flat Earth changed everything. As for what finally brought me to Flat Earth, hmm, in all honesty, I was probably aware of the term Flat Earth and it's called Con connotation for over a year, but it seemed too big of a thing, and that's weird for me because I am and was a huge truth seeker for years. 9-11, global warming, secret societies, CERN, Mandela effect, UFOs, ancient aliens, pyramids, and so on. I was even involved with Dr. Stephen Greer's disclosure project at one time. Now I am not. But for whatever reason, Flat Earth was just too big. It wasn't until I watched briefly an Eric Dubay video and a Rob Skiba video that I stumbled upon you, your simple repetitiveness of just do some research, take a look. You wore me out. So I looked and ugh, some exclamation points there. You, Rob Skiba, and the others were a blessing in disguise. So now I spend my time doing research, digging up old books, magazines, scripture to help me understand more. It cost me friendships. Lots of sleepless nights and much money, but you know what, it's all worth it, and I would do it a thousand times over. What, what did you spend? Oh, you, you spent money on books, I think. In all truthfulness, I think the simplest answer to why they do this and why the deception is to deny obf obfusc wow. obfuscate. I never use that word. I'm not going to use that word. And marginalize any and all proof of God and his one and only son, Jesus Christ. I think it's that simple. So in closing, I want to thank you, Mark, if you know any of those guys from Rob Skiba to Eric Dubay. You know, I have heard of them. Please forward this email to them. Also, I appreciate all of you. I wish I could have made the conference, but I found out a couple days too late. I will be the, in the next one involved. Uh, currently, I'm trying to make like-minded people in my area I can meet up and collaborate with. I will spend time and money to do what I can also. I have an idea that if done properly could be very telling. Would love to talk about it with you. See, you're, you're cliffhangering me. That's what you're doing. Uh, flat Earth will not stop and the momentum is reaching critical mass, if you will. It grows exponentially now. Thanks again, Mark. Uh, if you need me, I'm there. Kind regards, Jeff from Toronto. Thank you, Jeff, very much for that. All, the Kind words are always appreciated. And I, I do try to skim at least skim uh, a lot of the emails i know i have to torch some of the emails look at the three pages long i'm not going to read it on this show and uh, i may not be able to read it all there's just so much only so much time in the day between um, emails and phone calls in fact i haven't even checked my messages this morning and the uh, uh texts and what you know content i gotta go through as many videos as i can online in fact this morning the um, the CBS story came out finally. Uh, you know, the CBS came to, they were the same meetup as National Geographic and they were shooting around each other so neither side could would, would be able to show each other's cameras, which was really freaky. You know, because you watch the CBS interview and I'm not, it's like I don't even, I'm not even there. They only talked to Patricia and uh, Netta and Aaron and a few other people. And uh, then they talked to Mad Mike. But the point is, is that uh, they, 
from it you know reality is all in the perception it's it's really really interesting and they were again they weren't, weren't allowed to talk to me that was fun okay so this one's called safe club equals san antonio flat earth Oh, right, right, the the, the meetup, uh, he came up with a cool little thing. So for the San Antonio meetup, he, he called, you know, S-A-F-E, San Antonio Flat Earth. Mark, no sphere, fear ever found here. Yeah, I say that fast. San Antonio Flat Earth Club, biblically supported, truth supported by the firmament, Church of God in San Antonio, Texas. Perhaps edit a added promo above. Yep, and I did the promo for him. I did several promos for him. I hope he keeps doing it. This one's called Vacuum of Space, huh? Hey, Mark, please share your thoughts. It's from Reddit. Uh, the dragon departing from the ISS. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's from Chris. You guys can look that up. The, the dragon stuff from SpaceX. Yeah, whatever. This one's called World's Oldest Astronomical Clock is based on a flat earth on YouTube. Hi, Mark. Wondering if you've ever seen this. And it's Mary Beth from Vancouver, beautiful British Columbia. And yes, I have seen that. You guys can look up the world's oldest astronomical clock. It's awesome. Because it looks like a flat earth clock. This one's called Fences. Mark, the bird wall pretty much covers the events leading up to the construction of the fence that keeps the general public away from the boundary of the flat earth. However, the continued construction of military bases in Antarctica in 1958 was not the only activity undertaken by the U.S. government. On January 14th, 1958, the U.S. announced that it was going to build a string of radar stations in the North Arctic Circle. The BMEWS otherwise known as the Ballistic Missile Early Warning System, was supposed to give the U.S. a 15 to 25 minute heads up if there were any incoming Soviet missiles and estimate where they would hit. We know now that at the highest levels of government, the U.S. and the USSR were and still are essentially allies. Absolutely right. Anyway, and I don't want to go off on a rant here because you guys, some of you already know this, and that is <laughs> we're not enemies with Russia. Or the Soviet Union. Never have been. It's one of our little secrets. It's very, very clever. And that is, you know, two biggest kids on the block are actually secret allies in case somebody else comes along and then they can gang up on them. Uh, it's like, oh, no, it's not true. We hate Russia. It's like, really? Because we've apparently hated them since the 50s and never, ever fought them. Ever. It's like, no, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah. Is there any toe-to-toe -to -toe happening there? Afghanistan. Nope. Nope. Uh, just take your pick. We don't. We only do it in the movies and television. It's it's a great trick. I love it. I I think it's it's a fantastic little con. Uh, amazing that it's, it's, we, they've kept it going for as long as they have. Uh, anyway, sorry. Because of this fact, you would have to call BS in the radar site cover story we were given. And when you look deeper, the only thing left is the construction of the other fence. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, because there's a part of the North Pole which probably should be kept secret as well. Uh, the one that keeps the public away from the center of the flat earth. Yeah. I freely admit that I am not the best researcher around, but you don't have to dig very deep to become suspicious of the timing of the, um, uh, the ballistic project reason for the project. And the fact that one guy is central to both of them, that, guy later leading a naval battle group to the outer boundary, which I'm beginning to believe was because one of the 12 countries already on the ice was about to go rogue and go for the boundary. No, not necessarily. Uh, uh, the Operation High Jump, The I like the original story, which is, because remember, there was actually one country that was down there in the 1940s. Everybody else went and did the whole World War II thing, uh, but Germany, Nazi Germany, was down there, uh, Indiana Jones style, doing whatever, whatever they were doing down there. They were setting up some sort of base. And because of that, they, uh, the, you know, after we, uh, the United States and the Allies, the, the Allied powers won the, the war, there was this uh, German base down there. So they sent a full-blown carrier group, and of course, the rest of it is speculation, to say the least. I and mean, there's all sorts of fun stories, and I don't want to get into it. Look it up yourself. You know What really happened during Operation High Jumps? Fascinating. Anyway, continue with this email. Um, as a side note, if you examine the old black and white films of both projects, you find that they are indistinguishable from each other. We were shown blizzard conditions on a flat snow-covered landscape. Cargo ships unloading massive amounts of supplies and building materials. Cargo planes outfitted with skis. Heavy equipment, sled dogs, and sleds. I would like to hear your thoughts on this, Mark, and call out the many excellent researchers in the FE community to dig into the BMEWS project to find out what really went on in the North Arctic Circle between 1958 and 1961. 
I don't have a problem with being wrong with this theory, so I invite anyone to shut me down on this issue. Good. Good attitude to have. And that's uh, from Lane from Granite Bay, California. All right. Slides, please. That's when this one's called. Hi, Mark. I'm listening to your podcast right now, and I've heard you talk about a couple of emails requesting the slides from Just Jack. I would truly appreciate it if you could send them to me as well. Have a wonderful day. Costa, yep, I will send anyone the 12 slides. All you have to do is email me and say, I want the slides. Just Jack claims that he can convert anyone to a flat earth mentality in 12 slides or less. And he has these slides and they look a lot like the um, DITRH slides. Uh, but they're slightly modified and they're good. They're good, I got to admit. I, but oh, honestly, part of it's the delivery. You got to know the slides in and out, and you got to be able to hit them with, you know, you know, in a in a confident manner, but not beat them over the head with it. That's my advice, anyway. Uh, let's see here. This one's called "Just Waking Up." Greetings, Mark. I'm not sure how I came across the FE stuff. I wasn't looking for it. However, I ran across some of it, and it caught my attention. I've had an interest in conspiracy theories for a while, but never took the flatter seriously. I don't understand that. I am very eager to try using a telescope or even a P900 to see the evidence for myself. I remember my father telling me of Admiral Byrd over 50 years ago when I was a child. I had tried Christianity many years ago, but did not find one-to-one -one relationship with God as I was told I would have. I left the church for many years, and I did try a couple of churches that never felt like home. That was 10 years ago. Last year, I started praying on my morning drive to work. I prayed for friends and family, but mostly I prayed that I would find a better job. Hmm. Not any job, but the right job that God wanted me to be at, where I could be happy any of the, any of they would, wow, well, okay, I, I don't even know how that sentence is supposed to go, would be happy with me. It took a while, but I was blessed with getting this job just when I really needed it. My employer at the time had just told me that they were going to have to cut my hours in half to 20 hours per week. Ugh. And there was no way I'd be able to survive on that. I had been at this new job for almost one year and I'm very happy with them and they're happy with me. On the way to work the other day, I realized I'd not been praying since I started my new job. I had felt I needed to thank God for this job. If he could hear me, I prayed that he would give me some kind of sign that he was real and could hear my prayers. I arrived at work safely that morning and it was a slow day at work. I was watching a video on YouTube and one video led to another and ended up on Flat Earth site. Now my curiosity is up. I remember asking a pastor about Genesis 1-6 and as I remember, he did not explain about the waters above and waters below the firmament. After watching many hours of YouTube videos and the Flat Earth and NASA video lies, 9-11, JFK, chemtrails, all the pieces of the puzzle seem to be fitting together now. I would like to see this absence of the curvature for myself if this is true, that the earth is flat, then man and or powers that be have been lying in the Bible is the truth from the very beginning. This leads me to the question, did God lead me to find the truth about the earth as his sign to show me? Oh, he is real. Either there is a God that answered my prayer for a sign or I'm just another sucker caught up in another internet hoax. I live in Los Angeles and I would like to meet with someone in my area that could show me an example of being able to see something that I should not be able to if the world is round. You know what? I am, His name is Grant. I am going to make sure Grant gets in touch with the LA group out there. So I'm going to put that in my to-do pile. Because hopefully he would look. All you have to do, Grant, if you're listening, I don't know if you are, uh, just type in Flat Earth Meetup. You know what? I'll, I'll just, I, I will email this information. Just type in Flat Earth Meetup Los Angeles or Flat Earth Meetup in whatever, you know, Pasadena or Rancho Cucamonga, whatever. whatever. There's a whole bunch of uh, ones that are happening out there. Um, this one's called ISS Hole. Mark, please get your former subject matter expert on vacuums to explain what happens to a pressurized capsule that has a breach in the nine tor vacuum of space. Remember that woman last year that got sucked out of the airliner when it was depressurized? Uh, in my opinion, the ISS should have shredded like a sh soda can that left the fr left in a freezer. I admittedly uh, no expert though. Thank you in advance. That's Adam in Virginia. Yeah, absolutely right. That whole that didn't get a lot of traction, did it? That hole from the ISS, they were talking about it. Like, yeah, there was a woman that was sucked out of a plane. Well, almost sucked out. Her seatbelt was still on, but she still died. She was, the, the window, there was a crack in the window. Some, the engine shed apart and punched a hole in the window. And again, the pressure difference, the, the, the pressure difference of a vacuum or even a partial vacuum is no joke. It's absolutely no joke. It's extremely powerful. 
um, the, how it tries to equal out because you've got a, a, an area with less molecules and an area with more molecules. And it will always, you know, it's balloon physics. That's all it is. And yet there was apparently a hole in the ISS in the perfect vacuum of space. And yet this, you know, this hole didn't get bigger and they supposedly plugged it with their finger at some point, whatever. Yeah. It, it, an example of the other the opposite example would be a submarine if a submarine gets a hole in it at a certain depth it's over uh you know if it, it, you know the water will come in so unbelievably fast we've all seen the, the the movie and television things there's a lot of pressure both sides coming in going out a lot of pressure all right uh moving on this is flat earthers caused a leak on the iss oh yeah look at this nasa attempted to grab attention away from the flat earth is to cause a leak i'm surprised the space station did not explode a finger can survive the vacuum of space yeah you can look up this story this uh this was back at the end of august when the story first came out okay moving on this one's called 25th anniversary of moon landing Mark, at the 25th anniversary, Neil Armstrong said in his speech basically that he was a parrot repeating what he was told, and the uh, bird lander did not fly very well. Neil said, if you can get to the truth, there are things that are beyond belief. Also, when President Clinton spoke at the same event, he spoke of an unscalable wall. Yeah. I need the truth in plain sight. Yeah, you can look that up, by the way. Neil Armstrong, of course, is not with us. And the movie, based on his life, The First Man, just came out two days ago. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend seeing it because it's just going to be a, a load of junk. But at the same time, it is probably interesting because it is first time ever officially uh, a Hollywood uh, studio has faked the moon landing. So that's interesting if you want to see. Again, why they'd never done it before. They had to make, by the way, they had to make this movie uh, now. It wasn't just made because of us. Uh, it was also made because uh, the, I think the bigger reason is because the 50th anniversary, technically, of, of Apollo uh, 11 was is next year. I mean, it's, it's coming up like soon, a couple months. It's official, you know, and so 60, 50 years, 60 years, 50, 50 year anniversary. I think, and they uh, they got to do something. You think there'd be a lot more celebrations about it, but no. So they, they throw in an A list movie. But there it is from Flat Earth. Remember Flat Earth Clues One, called the Empty Theater, touched on the fact that there were no Hollywood movies about the moon, and here we are finally in 2018, the end of 2018. There it is, the first Hollywood movie about the moon mission, and it was really only about Neil. So. Okay, moving on. This one's called 12 Questions. 12 Questions? No, no, it's going to be 12 Pictures. Hi, Mark. Love your show. All the way from Melbourne, Australia. Could me, you send me those 12 questions, please? Much appreciated. Stay flat. And that's from George. And uh, no, he's, he's confused. So I sent him. It's 12 Pictures. Pictures. Got to enunciate more. So Caroline told me, tells me. Uh, the 12 pictures, which are from Just Jack, and then there's five science questions, which I sent off to the physicist from Georgetown, which he would not answer. So I, if you guys want either of those, just let me know. If I want the five questions or the 12 pictures. If you mix it up like this guy, it's fine. I'll probably just end up sending you both. This next one's called Flat Earth. And it says, Dear Mark Sargent, I've been watching your Flat Earth Clues videos, and I want to say that they are well made with great research. Now, with being taught that the Earth is round and do question everything, I'm questioning your videos in the flat Earth. So I'm open-minded watching some of the videos. And even though some of the points sound plausible, you never showed any proof of your findings. That is true. You show the viewers inconsistencies in the stories of the government and that they are lying, which could be true. But then you always point that it is because the Earth is flat. Yeah, I do. Now, that's just speculation without any proof true i am connecting the dots no question and from my point of view there could be so many reasons different from the flatter theory oh yeah <laughs> let me know what they are if you get a chance so you haven't convinced me yet that's fine could you but you're still writing me about it aren't you it's in your head could you actually prove the things that you speculate about in the video uh, if i could i probably wouldn't be doing a radio show on sundays 
Uh, some other questions I have are, if the Earth is flat, how do you explain day and night? Because it's a really, really small sun. How do you explain the solar eclipse? Again, small sun, and it's all part of the sky system, the projection system. If there is a giant dome that we can't cross, how do you explain a meteorite? That, that is not hard. Seriously, a tiny little piece of metal ore, fire it in at high speed and let the atmosphere burn it up. I'm sorry if any of these questions get answered in one of your videos. I just got to part five. All right, there you go. There, I, I finally have an email that I can show people. Most of the time, when people do the clues, they will call me uh, before they get to, they even get to, to clue two. They'll call me, and I can hear myself in the background. I can hear the clue in the background. In this case, he got to part five, and he started. Call, he called me. It's great. Glad I, I, I when I say, oh yeah, by the way, just call me. Here's my phone number. Call me. Anyway, could you please answer my questions or show me some hard proof that the Earth is flat to convince me? Card, re kind regard, Niels. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Not gonna yell. Uh, this one's called Hola Querida. Hola Querida. Mi nombre es Shania Miller. Me encontré contigo mientras buscaba. Yeah, no, I'm slipping into Russian. Um, oh, oh, okay. There's a translation down below. Hello, dear. My name is. Sh Shania Miller, I came across to you while searching for a man I can trust for a serious relationship, and I decide to write to you. How is the condition of your health? <laughs> I hope you are fine and in good health. I look forward to your response so I can send my pictures and tell you more about myself. Thanks from Shania Miller. Oh, I'm going to write her back. She sounds great. She sounds really interesting. And she's so curious about my health. <laughs> Isn't that like the definition of a gold digger? Isn't that like what it is? So, how is your health? So, are they rooting for you to be in good health? Or it's like, oh, so your liver's failing. Oh, that's sad. Maybe we should date. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, major long distance laser test. Greetings again from Louisiana. Thought about this for a while, and I think the community is large and strong enough now. We need to find someone on the inside that has access to one of the large observatory lasers so that they can bounce off the moon. Have seen them demonstrate a few times in videos instead of punching in the coordinates of the moon, punching the coordinates of a mountain range a few thousand miles away. It could be interesting. Flat as always, Ron. Yeah, it's not bad. I don't know if we're going to get anybody uh, that works in it at an observatory. They are going to be really, really tough to turn. Just saying. This one's called Jack's 12 Picks and Survival Guide and God's Throne. All right, apparently they want it all. Mark, greetings from Montana, where I'm on location developing wind farms. I actually live in Bremerton, Washington, which is right down the road from us. Uh, but we have spent only about 10 days there all year. Well, that's unfortunate. Bremerton's not that bad. I've uh, been a flat earther since about April of 2015. Yeah, same here. And you might find it sort of interesting that Zulu One from New York first got me intrigued in the concept. Mark was on a talk show on RBN with the host John and Mark commented that he had watched a video about the earth being flat. He had a couple of points like the horizon always flat, water did not curve. I sort of laughed along with the host. However, there was something in Mark's voice that indicated that he really believed it, and the seed was planted in my brain a few days later for no particular reason while at the grandkids' soccer games in Bremerton, I noticed by mid-afternoon the half moon in the west and a full sun overhead. That is when the journey started and much has happened in my life ever since. Mostly good, but some bad, mostly regarding family and friends. I'll stop because it would take what was intended to be a brief email. Too many pages. However, it'd be great to chat with you. So here's my mobile number. Call anytime or email me, really. Uh, let Mark from New York have it, too, if you want to have him call me and read it on your email show if you want. And that's from Mark Wasson, Bremerton, Washington. You know what? I'm going to let him know that I read this on the show. And I'll do that for you guys. If you if you want to email me and let me know, you know, it's like, oh yeah, but, you know, feel free to read it on the show if you want me to, if you don't listen to this all the time, if you don't listen to it on a regular basis on Sunday mornings or whenever, then uh, let me know and I'll, I'll um, shoot you an email and say, oh yeah, by the way, I read your thing. 
This next one's called Flat Earth Proof, which is interesting because there's a lot of what appears to be geometry in it. It's sent from Tim. Please check for yourself using spread. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I'm not going to read the, the, the pencil stuff. He basically wrote, uh, he did some geometry and he wrote in his notes in pencil on a piece of paper. Then he took a picture of that paper. So interesting. I'll, I'll definitely have to take a look at it and I will share it. So thank you for that. This one's called survival guide. Uh, Mark, I'd love to get a PDF of your survival guide. Been loving your videos content for the last two, three years. Keep it up. I'm list listening to one of your Q and A's right now. So I thought I'd shoot you an email. Thanks for the guide. And that's from Carson and yeah, yeah. Ha happy to do it. If anyone wants the survival guide, it's called empty shelves. I can shoot it off to you. Uh, just write me an email and say, I want the survival guide. And that's all you have to do. And I will, you don't even have to say hi or anything and I will fire it off to you. It's totally free. This one's called NASA photo. It might be legitimate. Hey Mark, I was just doing some reading on the NASA photo used for the recent ISS hole that was posted by the singing Canadian astronaut, Chris Hatfield. And yeah, if anyone, the, the, the funny thing about the NASA hole more than anything, more than, than, um, the fact that, you know, they said they plugged a hole in the ISS with their thumb. Yeah. Again, like stopping the water coming in from a sub, you know, in a submarine with your thumb, not going to happen. What was interesting was that the whole picture that Chris Hatfield tweeted, you know, did not, not, a, did not disclaimer in any way. So this isn't the hole. He is. Oh yeah. A hole you know, in the space station, pass it off as the real thing was an old electron microscope picture of a hole that was used for many things over the years. Uh, in fact, the most recent one, but you can look it up. It's a studio album by um, a band called Remedy Drive, a Christian band. And it was released in 2014. So it was only four years ago. And it was literally their album cover. It was the exact same hole that was used and uh, and you can you can research this whole it goes back it was uh commons creative commons license i think going all the way back 10 15 20 years more than that even uh in fact hang on the um yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm sorry I'm, I'm reading the article it goes yeah it goes all the way back to 1984 and where nasa officially released it supposedly 1984 now did nasa officially release it in 1984 i don't know maybe uh but they said it was oh yeah it was part of the solar max satellite incident where there was a hole in the satellite and they apparently took a picture of it up close with an electron microscope. Whatever. Okay, moving on. This one's called Info. And let's see. That's from Chris Pontius at flatearthmodels.com. Excuse me. And I think it was mostly personal information. So, but he's going to be in Denver. Oh, you know what? That's a good plug for the Denver conference. If you guys don't have your tickets yet, please think about going to the Denver conference, which is coming up in the middle of November. You can check it out at fe2018.com. I'm going to be there and a whole bunch of other content makers. Most of the, most of the high level content makers are going to be there. Uh, Bob from Globusters and Jaron and D Marble and DITRH and Patricia Steer. Uh, just to name a few, Rob Skiba, it just goes on and on. I mean, just about, you should see the list. It's, it's incredible. And, uh, it's, it's going to be a fun time. It's on a Thursday and a Friday in Denver, uh, at a hotel that's really close to the airport. Uh, so check it out if you get a chance. This one's called SpaceX Hologram Rocket. Hi, Mark. New video show, show, showing some old rocket launch glitches. Please feel free to use however you wish, if you wish. Cool. I'll check that out if I get a chance. This one's called ISS Meme. Hey, Mark, when I heard how the astronauts fixed the hole in the ISS, I couldn't help but think of MacGyver. He would have been proud for sure, but he's probably would have said, uh, hey, you got a, forgot a paperclip. Have a great day. Yeah, and he's got a, he's got a MacGyver thing going on there. All right, let's move on. This one's called Big Fan Survival Guide. Hi, Mark, big fan. Can you send me your survival guide PDF? Thanks uh, and regards. And that's from Fuller View. Don't have his real name, It's, but I'm sure it's a very nice person. So yeah, set that person a survival guide. This one's called Flat Earth Reality. Oh boy. Uh, all right, if, just so you know, 
I, I will try to read this. It's going to be difficult, though, because he has no paragraph breaks in it. And he also opens up really bad. It's called Flat Earth Reality. But he says, hello, Mr. Mike. Normally, I would get, it'd be like, okay, at least he didn't call me Eric or something like that. Uh, but and, and I don't mind too much because actually my name instead of Mark was supposed to be Mike and they changed it at the last minute. I don't know why. Uh, but I will, I will try to read this. If you're going to email me, use paragraph breaks and punctuation. If you can, I'm going to try to read this and hopefully I don't lose it. Uh, I'm a big fan of your work, but funny thing is I discovered you only a few months ago and I have been looking into Flat Earth for about four and a half to five years now and I'm only 22 years old. I got introduced to the truth by one of my co-workers uh, who discovered Flat Earth and about it just a few days before he told me so we were going, wow, we were actually looking at it at the same time and draw all the same conclusions that it's truth and we're trying to convince first other co-workers while I was still working there. None of them would even... Again, remember, there's no there's no punctuation yet. I, don't, I haven't run into a period yet. And would even try to understand uh, it except the boss who actually started to believing in this truth but not fully, comma. <laughs> then as stopped working there, I was explaining this to my friends. You know what? I'm thinking this guy's Eastern Bloc because of the, the ways I'm... Uh, because he's saying this are my friends. Uh, best way to blah, blah, blah. Probably went in. Um, I'm sorry, the, the, the email, it just, it just continues on like that. It's really, really broken in terms of English. So I don't want to torture you guys. I mean, I suppose I could go into like, you know, my Russian accent. The idea would be to mix a case like people versus NASA, people versus all 50 countries that singed Antarctica deal where we would end up playing cheap a person. And would want to be on it, but wow, yeah, it's not even fun Russian in this case. There's just a lot of stuff. Anyway, very excited, super happy, and it's from JJ, yeah, JJ Knezovic. JJ Knezovic. Uh, have a nice for. <laughs> I will say this. Thanks for reading. Have a nice forever. Nice smiley face. Cool. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I, I I will read this offline. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna torture people anymore with trying to read this one. Uh, because, sorry, I, it's got to be somewhat concise. This one's called Getting the Truth Out, and this is a little better. Hi, Mr. Sergeant, my name is Arthur. I wanted to write for several reasons. I've been watching your videos as well as others on the leading front of the truth movement, and I want you to know that because of certain videos that you've made and shared, uh, I have turned my life to God. I want to thank you from every bit of my heart for having the guts, intelligence, and compassion for others to do what you do. That being said, I feel strongly compelled to play some part in spreading this knowledge and opening people's minds. You are 100% correct about how scientism followers have nothing but to try and make fun of us. It's very sad. I looked up the most popular videos on YouTube under the search Flat Earth, and I was disappointed to see the garbage people are watching the most. Disinformation and ridiculing us. Uh, my question is, what is the best way to get others to latch onto this as I have? Is there some question I can ask them or comment that you feel works great? Any suggestions would be very appreciated. Thank you for your time and keep up the amazing work. Yeah, if you're going to hit people for right out of the gate, brand new, and they have the ability to watch videos and they have the time to watch videos, then I would suggest going to something I created. Uh, it's, 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 it's. I don't think I've got any videos actually in it of my own. It's called the Flatters Short List for New People. It's a playlist on YouTube. You can find it at my channel. Or just type in the Flatters Short List for, for New People. It's got about 25 videos, all ranging in size from five minutes to two hours. And it's a lot of introductory work. And it's all really, really, really good stuff. And it covers things from uh, Flat Earth from a lot of different aspects. And I recommend it. Highly. That's that's what I would go after first. I would hit him with that. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Reality. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, okay. So remember, okay. So the Russian guy. <laughs> okay, he's not Russian. Oh, even better. Okay. All right, I'm going to read this now in the accent because he, he, he apologized later. And um, he goes, Also sorry for any misspelt in the mail. I'm originally from Croatia. Now live in Ireland due to USA government controlling my country to an absolute. 
And also, sorry for misspelling your name, I get names confused a lot, so please don't take it personally. I just checked out what I wrote and realized that I wrote Mike instead of Mark. Also, once we would prove Flat Earth, we could also sue every country, which weed is illegal and as evidence we would be able to use the Bible as in it says, use everything on the earth except f the forbidden fruit. And weed is not a fruit. By forbidden fruit, some speculate that he was talking about gold. What? <laughs> Although it appears as he talked about gold applies. Gold apples? <laughs> what? Oh my god, I'm regretting reading that one. Sorry guys. But, but thank you. JJ. Okay. This one's called Experiment Suggestion. Mark, weigh an object such as a 10 pound weight at a point as close as possible to, tr to the North or South Pole. Weigh the same object at the equator. There would be a noticeable difference due to the centrifugal force. Or has this been done already? Love your shows, bro. Keep it up and pray you'll come to Jesus one day. I don't, I wouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, and yeah, as far as the weight goes, uh, I've kind of taken a different stance on that. I knew I used, I used to talk about that back in 2015, early 2016, when I said that wooden objects weigh a little less at the equator than they would at the North Pole because of centrifugal force. But truth is, uh, once I started thinking about the tides and have to, how you'd have to move the tides around, which means you would have to manipulate gravity a little bit, uh, you know, here and there. Uh, that, that argument doesn't really hold water anymore because like, uh, I mean, you're going to, if you're going to manipulate gravity from the ground anyway, then weights are going to be screwed up. So there you go. This one's called just wondering, Hey, Mark was up. He actually spelled it W U Z. I've never used that term, but I I've heard of it. It's something the kids do. I watched some of Eric DeBay's videos and I like a lot of what he has to say about Flat Earth anyway, but I heard in some interviews that he seems to be a bit of a pretentious prick. <laughs> I, his words, not mine. I didn't say it. At least to me, it seems like he thinks he owns the Flat Earth movement. Uh, yeah, he and Matt Boylan. Uh, I should, they should put those, actually just put those two guys in a room and see where the argument goes. You know, it's like, I invented this. No, I invented this. Whatever. As if he single-handedly came up with the flatter theory on his own and the original spokesperson. Doesn't seem much like a team player, uh, but more like a cult leader. Uh, yes and yes. Uh, separate, we fail, but united, we stand. His girlfriend looks hot, but then again, it's Thailand, could be a ladyboy. I'm just kidding. Kind of. So is he cool or not? Please uh, uh, send me... There you go. Okay, here's... At the end of this, because I did not read this email. Send me the freebies, please. Thanks, bro. So yeah, I'm going to send him the... Um, I'll, I'll write him this afternoon. And send him the, the pictures and the questions and the guide. And I will say that I, Eric does not play well with others. Which is true. Which is true. Who's the only person he endorses right now? Dell? That's it? Uh, look, I like Dell too. You know, he, he seems to be a hothead from time to time, but he is Scottish, so I can't can't blame him too much for that. But, I mean, Eric does not have a lot of allies. And even, <laughs> that that being said, even even Dell as an ally is more than what Matt's got. Who Who's Matt teaming up with? Nobody. All right, this one's called Flat Earth Strange World 43. Hi, Mark. I just recently listened to Strange World 43. I know, I know where the air traffic controller Dale submitted that he proposed M theory and wrote a paper. Has been de has it been debunked? A quick Wikipedia search reveals Witten to be the founder of M theory as proposed in 1995, four years earlier than what Dale is saying. Uh, if not, where would I find a copy of the Throne of God paper he wrote? Thanks very much for your time. Keep going. And that's from John. I don't think... Did I write him back? Yeah, I did. Good. Yeah, and I sent it to him. Whew, I was worried there. That's a long way around. Saying, hey, can I have the, the paper from the, uh, uh, the air traffic controller uh, flight instructor discussion? Moving on. This one's called Rob Skiba to interview Bart Sabrell. Weeding as we're spinning. I 
got one of the fastest interconnections you can have. All right. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm a close friend of Bart Sabrell and his wife. They actually will be visiting me in Israel in October. And I was wondering if you could give me the email address of Rob Skiba so that Rob could perhaps have Bart for an interview, even though Bart Sabrell is not a supporter of Flat Earth. Uh, I don't. Did I write this guy back? Thanks a lot. Keep up the good work, John. Uh, I did write him back. Yeah. I don't know if it happened. And Bart, yeah, Bart Sabrell hates us, but whatever. He hates the the Apollo landing. A friend of my friend is, is or I'm sorry, enemy of my enemy is my friend. And uh, if Bart hates the, the moon landing, great. Fantastic. He helps us. Uh, if he hates Flat Earth, well, he doesn't help us, but at least he's talking about it. Uh, this one's called White Daylight versus Golden Sunlight. Hi, Mark. Intro. I'm Wendy from Singapore. Christian, fully converted Flat Earther. Thanks to your Flat Earth clues and the works of all the other YouTubers in the community. The highlight of my day every day is when I get to read my Bible and contemplate how my Earth works. I'd like to highlight an observation that I haven't heard anyone in the community ask about. Thought. Every day our sky brightens before the sun rises and remains bright for an additional 30 minutes after the sun sets. I believe the light we experience before sunrise and after sunset is the biblical day two light, which I believe is a separate event from the day for sunlight. I don't think that the light created in day one ever gets turned off, but is there all the time 24 7 season in and season out eric dollard said light is just an electromagnetic wave that is invisible but can only be seen when it bounces off matter which makes a lot of sense to me following that logic perhaps there's something hovering in our sky that allows this day one light to bounce off during the daytime thus providing us with white daylight which is different from the golden sunlight thoughts wendy yeah Wendy, if you're listening, absolutely. Uh, and and here's where it gets really really cool, when because I'm gonna I'm gonna tie it to simulation theory. When we started building the early three D three D simulations, we did not have a sun and the moon in the sky uh, because it was too hard. It was it was hard to develop back in the you know back, programming takes a while. You know it gets it gets more and more complex, but we still had to make daylight. And so we just did. So when you go into the early video games, you can look in the games going all the way back to the 80s. When you looked in the sky, uh, you know, of course, these were 2D games. But, we, you know, we, we changed that once we got to 3D. You just you just made the sky the, the color that you wanted to. Now, the light source wasn't coming from the sky, but it helped with, you know, it, it helped paint everything. So, yeah, you made the sky a, a light blue. And, and it would change the, 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 the color. It would just change of shades of light, you know, sh shades of blue. Uh, it would get light blue, light blue, light blue, and then darker, darker, darker. But there would be no sun crossing the sky. It was just too complex for us to do back then. So, yeah, uh, I've, I've said this for some time now, which is God, you know, we, I know we think of God with a hammer and a chisel and stuff. It's like, look, God is going to be way more sophisticated than us. And we deal with electronics and computers now we deal with software and what i'm saying is is god's a programmer plain and simple I, if you guys uh, if you have any doubts of that look uh, look into the double slit experiments and no i don't mean the double slit experiment from hundreds of years ago i'm talking about the modern versions from the 60s and the 70s leading all the way up to the pinnacle of it which was in 2002 look that up look up the double slit experiment in fact i even made a video on it on my channel you can tie it in type type in flat earth and virtual reality and how it works and I, I took a clip from another channel and I, I spliced it in and it, it shows me now why am I talking about virtual reality it doesn't really matter to me I'm still flatter 24 7 no question and the big reason there is virtual reality is, is really difficult to explain to somebody if you don't have any sort of background in software it's really really tough because you have to know something about how software works um, but regardless of that, when you build a simulation, it is almost always, unless you're going out of your way to do so, almost every simulation that is every, ever built, whether it's entertainment or educational or military, they're all, they all share the same trait. They're all flat. They're absolutely flat. They're, they're built on a flat square. In fact, they're built on a big box. So it's, a, it's like, a, like a giant, um, again, like a, like a Hollywood soundstage. You have a big square floor, square walls, and a square ceiling, and then you build everything inside it. So if you want to build sort of, you know, the dome stuff inside, you can, and the sun and the moon and everything. But the, the point is, is they're all flat. And of course, you get mountains and valleys and all that other crap. But the end of one edge and the end of the other edge are absolutely parallel with each other. 
So anyway, great. Sorry, I, I know I go off on a little tear on that one, but it's it, it's it's relevant to her point. So uh, you know what? I will write her and make sure that I that she listens to that. But yeah, good point. Glad glad you brought it up. Was actually hoping somebody would one day. This one's called On the College Campus. That's from Randy. And he has a picture of a picture of him. What's he doing? He's on the camp, college campus. Oh yeah. And he did a Flat Earth meetup at the he posted it on one of the bulletin boards. At Flat Earth Meetup with an AE map, Chipotle Mexican Grill. That was in Bentonville. That was September 29th. Awesome. Thank you for that. This one's called Flat Earth Map with GPS Coordinates of Pyramids. Hi, Mark. One of your email guests asked for a GPS map of the pyramids. I have an Excel doc where I plotted the coastline of all the continents, GPS coordinates, and added a few pyramid locations to the map. See attached JPEG. Pyramids are the red dots. Huh. All right. I'll take a look at that. This one's called No Subject. <laughs> Hello, Mark. Your work is fantastic. And that's from Yossi. Thank you, Yossi. Glad to hear it. This one's called Twitter Poster Campaign. Hello, Mark. Could you make, could I please ask you to mention my Twitter campaign, which would be nice to have some backup. It's at F-E underscore Forts. Forts is an acronym for Flat Earth, Observable, Repeatable, Testable, Scotland. That's from Rob McKenzie, staying ahead of the curve. Yep, I uh, mentioned it. There you go. At flat earth, F-E underscore forts. This one's called Flat Earth Conference. Hello, Mark. I called your phone number this morning and left a message. I thought maybe you won't be more apt to check your email. Yes, that's true. I, I do listen to all my messages. I do. Uh, but I check my email probably even more often. My name is Teresa and I live in uh, Waukesha, Wisconsin. I, I think I have convinced my husband to go to the conference with me in November. I have seven kids and down to homeschooling the last two, seventh and tenth grade. I... And my husband are celebrating our 30-year anniversary this fall, so I thought what a great way to do it by going to the conference. He might not agree, so I just told him I really want to go. Aw, you're going to force him. I need the name of the facility and contact for tickets. Would you have that for me? And that's from Teresa, and I'll make sure I wrote her back. Yes, I did. Excellent. This one's called Flat Earth Dad. Hello, Mark. With the new school year started here in New York, my daughter... Her name is Rain, R-E-I-G-N, she's 12, kind of challenged her science teacher during a lesson about the globe. She quickly says my dad doesn't believe in space, in which the, cla in which the class burst out laughing. Um, Rain told her that my dad will debate the teacher, the principal, and the president of the United States. Awesome. She laughs and tells her uh, it's going to be an interesting year. I can't wait to meet your dad. It's... Uh, pretty well versed in FE. I have a pretty good list of points and clues. Just wondering if you have a little list of proofs I could use to make sure I hit as many valid proofs. Thanks for all your work and contribution towards the Flatters community. Keep it flat. And that's from Red. His name's Red. And yeah, I wrote him back and I sent him the uh, five questions that I sent the uh, Georgetown University professor, which they couldn't answer. Moving on. Which one are we going to end on? we're getting getting close to that time folks this one's called sun drifting to the right mark good afternoon i watched a video of ditrh's channel from jaronism the only flat earth proof you need i watched the sunset in the video the sun appears to drift to the right of the mountains as it sets that would explain the drifting of the sun to the right on a ball earth psalms 19:6 would explain it on a flat earth it's rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them and there is nothing hidden from its heat Mmm, it's nice. What are your thoughts? Keep up the good work. Regards, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. It was a gr that was a great video by Jaron, and it's absolutely right. You know, the it proved that there wasn't a mirage out there. You, it, it was a great shot because the sun was going behind the mountains. Nothing wavered, nothing blurred, and so it's like, okay, what's wrong here? And then the trick is, and you're not looking at the sun. You're looking at the mountains because the mountains should not be visible. You're looking basically from sea level, uh, over a hundred miles, and you see the whole the whole island chain. You see the mountains over there, and you should not be able to see them from from that sort of distance. So it's great. It was a great video by Jaron. He does awesome work, despite what you will hear about the documentary. Yes, he did screw up two laser experiments, but he still does great work. Like, no, nobody bats a thousand. Nobody ever. 
that's a thousand. Just remember that. This one's called Sun and Moon. Mark, with gravity debunked, what force keeps the sun, moon, and stars from falling to the earth? Thanks, Robert. Uh, yeah. Okay, first off, I don't think gravity is completely debunked. I, I'd, I'd like to mention that real quick, uh, which is, is, is part of it buoyancy? Yeah, sure, of course, because we're living in sort of like a, a thin version of fluid for those people that haven't figured that out by now. Yes, water is H2O, right? Two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen. What are you breathing in right now? Which is why things get cloudy at a distance, you know, why we can't see forever. And that is because you are breathing four parts nitrogen to one part oxygen, which is N4O. And I, I'm not including the trace gases and I'm, because that just makes it way too more. It's, it's just, just leave it at, we'll round it to N4O, uh, which means that there's going to be some buoyancy involved. New question. There will, will be some buoyancy involved. However, you can't, but there's going to be some gravity there. And, and here's why. Um, gravity, I'll give you a perfect example. A fighter pilot, when he cranks it and goes straight up, right? He's in a sealed capsule. And yet he is being pulled down into that seat, hopefully not blacking out. That is the gravity force, right? Now, is he going through buoyancy? Yes, he is. So there's, it's a combination of both. Uh, but don't think it's just buoyancy. That's where I will disagree with other people say it's absolutely just buoyancy. Yes, buoyancy counts for a lot of it. Sure, no question. You release some helium in the air, it's going to go straight up, and it's going to you know, start sailing off to the to the ceiling, wherever this thing is. Uh, and it, 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 in a pressurized system, buoyancy is even amplified more. But the fighter pilot example still holds, which is, remember, it's a sealed capsule. It's a pressurized capsule. When you crank on that stick and you go straight up or you go straight down, but straight up is the more obvious one, you are being pulled back down uh, hard. It, you know, the world is fighting you. That part is going to be some sort of gravity. Sorry, it, it is. You know, it, it's some por form of molecular magnetism. You know, this magical force, this, you know, that even science can't tell you what it is. They can only tell you what it does. Uh, you know what? Maybe I should end on that one. Uh, you know what? Let's end on this one because it's Sunday. This this one we're going to end on. Uh, and it's literally called Sunday. Mark, I just heard you talking about Sunday as the holy day again. So I have a point. I have to point out that the Catholic Church changed the day from Saturday, which is the real Sabbath, to Sunday, which is Sunday, which is interesting. By the way, if you want to you get in, I, I don't want to get into it too much, but why is it spelled Sunday? Not like the Son of God, but the actual Son. Why is it spelled that way? Look that up. All the best, Kendall, which is a perfect way to end it because Kendall is my middle name. He even spells it right. And, um, oh no, wait, he just said all the best, Kendall. Oh, he remembered my middle name. It's actually from a guy named Johan. So there you go. There's an awkward ending to the show. Uh, thank you for remembering my middle name. That's awesome. Uh, which is why my YouTube channel is called Mark K. Sergeant. It's not like I had to do that because Mark Sergeant was taken or anything. I just said, well, I'll just put in the middle initial. All right. With that, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, thank you for everybody that e emailed me so far. Everybody's going to send me stuff in the future. Remember, you can send it to m sergeant 23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.